I'll lead the direct verbal assaults against us uh, unanswered. Now it's important to focus on how to avoid war and how to force Ukraine to stop the shelling and provocations against Donetsk and Lugansk. From the statements of a number of our colleagues, one may get the impression that Russia's recognition of the LPR and the DPR took place suddenly for no reason at all. Of course, that's not the case. It should be remembered that the DPR and the LPR declared their independence from Ukraine back in 2014, but we only recognize them now, despite the higher level of support for doing so, both in the republics themselves and in Russian society from the very beginning. At the time, the hope won out that the Ukrainian Maidan regime would think again and would stop talking to their own citizens in the east in the language of cannons and shooting and threats and shelling. Time and again, we firmly asked Kiev to listen to the aspirations of um, the people living in Donbass and the Russian-speaking residents of the country to respect their entirely legitimate desire to use their mother tongue and to teach their children in that language and also to honor the memories of those who liberated the land from fascists rather than those who fought on the side of fascists and had a hand in the killing of hundreds of thousands, pe thousands of people during the Second World War. Okay, so what you just watched was the representative from Russia at the United Nations Security Council meeting that happened regarding Russia acknowledging the independence of two regions within Ukraine. Now, there's very important background that is necessary to understand what exactly is going on. Now, there are claims that Russian-speaking people within Ukraine were being discriminated against and were not being fairly represented in the national government. There was an agreement that was come to in 2014. However, that agreement seemed to be destabilized when there was also a coup in Ukraine that was backed by Western power. Additionally, in 2014, these regions in eastern Ukraine actually declared independent and since that time have been effectively governed by the separatist movement. This is the critical detail that I think a lot of people are missing in this, is that there is a legitimate separatist movement within Ukraine that does have legitimate complaints about Russian-speaking people being discriminated against. Their concerns have only escalated considering the growing representation of far-right wing nationalists with inside Ukraine and the legitimization of a Nazi battalion inside of the Ukrainian military. These factors have given people inside these separatist regions real reason to be concerned about Ukraine. But the critical detail to understand here is that it has been almost a decade since they declared independence back in 2014. Now, Russia and a few other countries are recognizing the independence of these separatist regions. And so if we really want to understand what's going on, we have have to understand what is going on from the perspective of Russia in addition to understanding the perspective of the United States. And I'll do my best to give you the perspective of Russia because the rest of the media is focused on giving the perspective of the United States. From the perspective of Russia, there is no invasion of Ukraine that is happening and what they are doing is defending Russian speaking people with inside of Ukraine who have claimed independence. They are doing this nearly 10 years after they declared independence and they, in their view, are doing it because Ukraine is failing to uphold the Minsk agreement. That agreement had a lot of provisions in it that put requirements on the Ukrainian government that the Ukrainian government simply has not respected and followed through on. These skirmishes between separatist forces and Ukrainian forces have been ongoing for nearly a decade now, and many refugees have been entering Russia from the region, especially with the increased shelling from the Ukrainian military, and the increased presence and awareness of far-right nationalists inside of the Ukrainian military is deeply alarming, both to the Russian officials and the Russian people and the separatists within inside of these separatist regions in Ukraine. Now, to be clear, Russia is involved in this purely out of self-interest. Russia has very clear economic interests in the regions that are claiming independence and does in fact stand to gain economically should those regions actually get their independence because they would undoubtedly be allied with Russia. At this point, it really doesn't seem like Russia is planning on bringing them in as part of Russia. And the people who are running around saying, saying that independence is just a step to them being part of Russia is really a tacit acknowledgement of the fact that so many people within these regions do actually want to be part of Russia. There's a little bit of disagreement and unclearness here because once again, they're declaring independence. They're not necessarily declaring that they want to be part of Russia. But the fact that Russia has an economic interest in the separatist movement does not in any way, shape or form delegitimize the real marginalization that Russian speaking people have faced inside of Ukraine, nor does it delegitimize or erase the reality that these people inside of Ukraine have declared 
declared independent, which really seems to be lost in this entire conversation. Because right now it's being framed as a conflict between Russia and Ukraine as a border dispute, as opposed to a separatist movement trying to claim independence that is allied with Russia. Because that makes this a little bit different, doesn't it? Because what is happening? While the separatist group is claiming independence, the United States is actually supporting the Ukrainian military and providing weapons. And in providing those weapons, there's also a lot of very good evidence that the United States is actually also supporting literal Nazis within Ukraine as part of that Nazi battalion that was legitimized within Ukraine and sort of brought into their military. So from Russia's perspective, Russia sees itself as being a defender of people who are fighting for legitimate independence movements movement and they see their military support to that independent region as a counterbalance to the United States supporting the nationalist faction. So from the perspective of Russia, this is a response to escalation that has come from the United States. And I think that it is fundamentally dishonest to paint this picture as purely one of tension between Russia and Ukraine when there is a third player in this, which is the separatists, whose initial complaint was one about discrimination by the national government. And the fact that Ukraine has failed to uphold its side of the Minsk agreement is one of the underlying factors that's causing a lot of this tension. Distinguished colleagues, in conclusion, I would like to note that in today's statements, most of you did not find any place for the more than 4 million of residents of Donbass. It's as um, though you've been counseling out their faiths from your statements from 2014, generally um, calling them pro-Russian separatists. At the same time, you decided that the illegal coup in 2014 and only wanted to discuss with the new authorities how their rights would be upheld. That was all they wanted to do. In the last few days, with the sharp intensification in military uh, activity from the Ukrainian army along the contact line, the lives of hundreds of thousands of women, children and elderly persons have once again, as in 2014 and 2015, uh, turned up, uh, ended up un under real threat. And the main aim of our decision was to protect and uh, preserve those people and that is more important than all of your threats thank you and as a final note as the representative from russia actually mentioned russia is not a party to the minsk agreement it is the separatists and the national government of ukraine that were parties to the minsk agreement and when the united states and other western countries try to say that russia is not upholding the minsk agreement what they are in actuality trying to do is obfuscate and blur the lines between the separatist movement and the government of Russia, which once again are two different things. So really to sum all of this up, it's just important to understand that there's this organic separatist movement that is led by Russian speaking people in Eastern Ukraine. They declared independence back in 2014. And now after almost an entire decade of skirmishes and what is essentially a civil war inside of Ukraine, Russia and a couple of other countries have chosen to recognize the independence of these two regions, those regions being Donetsk and Luhansk. And while Western countries are trying to portray this as purely Russian aggression, the truth of the matter is, is that it's a lot more complicated and the United States has, for a long time, been pumping a lot of weapons into Ukraine. And to fail to recognize that action as aggression from the United States will lead people to fundamentally not understand what is going on. Because the United States is really only interested in the destabilization of Ukraine and the hurting of Russian economic interests, we should be incredibly wary about the United States' intentions in this situation. And I think that it would be an incredible mistake to support any type of military effort from the United States or other Western countries in Ukraine. Because so long as they're willing to allow Nazis as part of their coalition fighting the separatists, they will prevent any type of positive conversation about a peaceful resolution in this situation. Because ultimately, what needs to be the center of this conversation is the treatment of Russian-speaking people within Ukraine. And whether or not the solution is independence or the fair treatment of Russian-speaking people within Ukraine, there is nothing that the United States military can do to make that situation any better. This is Ben Corolla with Rebel Headquarters. You can catch my show Galaxy Brain on the Young Turks Twitch channel every Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. If you want to stay up to date with my content, you can follow me at Benjamin Corolla on Twitter. And lastly, to those of you who might be wondering or have noticed, my pronouns are in fact she, her.